Hi students, this is going to be a video that would be appropriate for reviewing factoring. So the first type of factoring we're going to review is the type of factoring that you should start any problem with whenever you are asked to factor. And that is taking out the greatest common factor. So let me quickly remind you that to take out the GCF, you're going to look at the coefficients or the constants, whatever is appropriate of each term. And you're going to first take out the biggest number that divides into both. And then you're going to look at each variable. If a variable appears in all terms, then the common factor or the greatest common factor is going to be the variable of least degree. So in the first example, we have 6x squared plus 12x. We would take out a 6 because 6 is the biggest number that appears in both terms. And we would take out an x because x appears in each term. And the lowest degree is the first degree. Then we would take and divide the GCF out of each term. So 6x squared divided by 6x leaves us an x. And then 6x divided into 12x would give us a positive 2. So this is the correct factoring of 6x squared plus 12x. Now, if you wanted to check your work, you could, for, you could multiply this back. You could distribute the 6x over the x and the 2, and you would get 6x squared plus 12x, so you would know you were correct. Go ahead and take a look um, at the next problem, the one over to the right, 8y squared minus 12y, the video, and you go ahead and try it. So now you can see the answer to that one. Let's go ahead and go to problem number two. For number two, we're going to factor the following trinomial where a equals one. Remember that the form of a trinomial that we can factor using this method is ax squared plus bx plus c. So basically what we're going to do is we are going to come up with the two factors of c that add up to b. So the two numbers must multiply to letter c, but they must add to b. So in this case, this case of uh, this problem, x squared plus 5x plus 6, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 6 but add to 5. So those two numbers would be 2 and 3. So we're going to factor this as x plus 2 and x plus 3. Right? It's always going to be two binomials. And um, again, that applies when your original problem is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now go ahead and try the other problem. So as you can see, that one factored as x minus 2 times x minus 5. Next, we have factoring another trinomial in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, but this one has an a value greater than 1. So again, what we should do every time we approach a problem is say, oh, is there a GCF? And in this problem, 2x squared plus 11x plus 5, there is not a GCF. So even after we've looked for a GCF, if a is still greater than 1, then we can use the trial and error method or the method that we call splitting the middle term. But generally what we teach at MASIC is the ratio method. So let me go ahead and remind you how to use the ratio method on this problem. So with the ratio method, you are going to multiply the very first number or the leading coefficient by the constant. And when we multiply those two, we get 10. So now what we need is two numbers that multiply to 10, but add to 11. So they need to multiply to the product here and add to the middle term. 
So those two numbers in this particular case are going to be 10 and 1, because 10 times 1 is 10, and 10 plus 1 is 11. And once we have written each of those down, we're going to leave a little space in between them, we are now going to put the leading coefficient, which is 2 in this case, in front of each of those factors. And we are going to use a colon showing a ratio between the leading coefficient and each factor. So once we've done that, we're going to look at each ratio separately and decide if it can be simplified. Now I can see that the first one would simplify down to a 1 to 5 ratio if I divided each of the two terms there by 2. The second one cannot be simplified. Believe it or not, we pretty much have our answer now. So we are going to write this as two binomials. The first one we're going to write as 1x. This is where we put in our variable, 1x. And then in place of the colon, we can put a plus or a minus sign. In this case, it's going to be a plus. So I'm going to just put x plus 5. And my second binomial is going to be 2 x plus 1. Now, if I were to go ahead and FOIL those two, I should come back to my original problem, and I would in this case. So now I'm going to ask you to go ahead and try the second problem here. So I hope you were able to get that second problem. I've shown my work over there to the right and take a look and then we will move on to problem number four which is going to be factoring the difference of squares so you may remember the way to factor the difference of squares is to take the square root of each of the terms in the problem for example in this problem the square root of x squared is just x and the square root of 9 is 3. And the way that uh, the difference of squares uh, factors is into conjugates. And that means you're going to have exactly the same terms two times in two binomials, but one will have a plus in the middle and one will have a minus. So this particular binomial and difference of squares factors as follows x plus 3 times x minus 3. And again, when you start the problem, you should always look to see if there is a greatest common factor. There was not in this case, so that problem is done. Go ahead and try the next problem. Okay, I hope you see the answers to the problem. And let's go to our fifth and final type of factoring that we're going to review, and that is factoring by grouping. So generally, we use factor by grouping when we have four or more terms. So when you have four terms, first what you should do, and probably what you should do in almost every case, is look for a GCF across the board in all four terms. And I don't see a GCF in here um, in all four terms. And the other thing that you should do is to really to put them in descending order by degree. This problem already is in descending order by degree. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to factor this as two binomials. So I'm going to go ahead and take the first two terms and put them in a set of parentheses. And generally, I would then take the second two terms and put them in a set, set of parentheses. But I did notice I have a minus sign here. So my way of dealing with that is to make this into a plus sign but to put the minus sign in front of the 3. So there's a, this is actually negative 3x minus 6. Okay, so now I have two binomials. It definitely is safest if you can put a plus sign in the middle here. So I just kind of made this plus a negative 3x. So now I'm going to look at my first 
set of parentheses and I'm going to take out my GCF. My GCF here is 2x squared. And when I divide that out of both of these two terms, I have left x plus 2. Okay, so I'm just dividing 2x squared out of each of those two terms. Now, in my second group, I would call the GCF negative 3. If both terms are, I should say, if the leading term is negative, when you have something in descending order by degree, by rights, you should take out a negative GCF. So I'm going to take out a negative 3 from each term in this second set of parentheses. And when I divide that negative 3 out, I have left x plus 2. And that is exactly what I was hoping for. You'll notice that these binomials are exactly the same. So now, if you can imagine it, I am going to take out the GCF from this term and this term of x plus 2. I'm going to pull that x plus 2 forward. And all I will have left is this, the 2x squared minus 3. And I'm going to put that in a second set of parentheses. So now I have two binomials. Neither of the binomials can be factored further. So I have factored these four terms by grouping. Go ahead now and try the other problem on this page. Okay, I hope you have stopped the video and tried that second problem. There is your answer. Again, remember, you could FOIL it out and then you would come back to your original problem. If you are still having difficulty factoring, you need to sign up for Flex and see your own math teacher or have your math teacher schedule some time for you in the math lab so you can thoroughly review and understand factoring.